An open congressional seat, a polarized electorate, a new president and a razor-thin margin in both houses of government. The special election for New Mexico's first congressional district could have been a nail-biter, but it ended up as a blowout as State Representative Melanie Stansbury hit the 60% mark in her first race for the U.S. House. The Light Opinion panel is here to talk about the significance of that victory. Former State House Minority Whip and Line regular Daniel Foley is back. Owner and founder of Vox Optima Public Relations, Merritt Allen, joins us, as does former state senator and progressive strategist Eric Riego. Now, Daniel, maybe the margin of victory surprised some people, but did the race ever, at any point in your mind, ever feel close? Oh, no. I mean, you know, look, that district, that the majority of that district, that uh, that, that makes up that House district, when I was in the legislature, mm-hmm. almost overwhelmingly, that side of Albuquerque was all Republicans. Right. Today, you have Bill Ream. You have one Republican that lives over there. So, mm-hmm. you know, clearly the demographics have shifted dramatically, um, which doesn't surprise us in Albuquerque. What does surprise me is the lack of effort from the Republican Party for the only race that was going on in the state of New Mexico and a race that had huge consequences nationally. Mm-hmm. So, you know, do, do you have a chance? Well, I can tell you, if you don't show up with your full team, you definitely have no chance. Mm-hmm. If you show up with a team ready to compete, um, you may have a fighting chance. I think what we're seeing in New Mexico um, is that the Democrat Party is energized, is fired up. Uh, they got things to be excited about. I'm not sure why, because they got Eric Gray going that party, but apparently that's enough to get him excited. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, the Republican Party seems to be Steve Pierce all the time, 24-7. I mean, I, there's word on the street that he's already, you know, uh, talking to folks about running for governor. So, you know, I mean, they seem to have spent more time trying to figure out how to have a freedom meeting in Amarillo than they did preparing for a uh, open congressional seat. And the reason that's important, regardless of whether you think that we have the Republicans have a chance to win the seat or not, is that data is extremely important to go out and recruit candidates in the future. Mm. Right. As you're seeing all of this stuff going, when you go knock on somebody's door, when you go knock on somebody's door to, to go take on one of those Democrat candidates, when you go knock on Merritt Allen's door and say, Merritt, you should run. Look, Mark Morris ran ahead the curve, ran ahead of Trump. He you know, he did this. He did that. Here's all this information for your legislative district. You should be a good candidate. Um, now you're going to sit down and say, look, Mary, you should run. And, you know, we just had a we just had a race that we got shellacked even worse than we did in the presidential race. Right. So you, you've really you've really prevented yourself from recruiting candidates. And I just think it highlights the ineffectiveness and the complete lack of a Republican Party in the state of New Mexico at this time. I mean, you know, it's clear that Steve Pierce marketing machine. Um, and at the end of the day, we're seeing the results of that. You know, he guaranteed a win for Trump in New Mexico. That didn't happen. We lost seats in the legislature. We haven't, you know, we had this uh, this open congressional seat that we lost worse than we lost, uh, you know, when we had a less named Republican candidate at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you look at Mark Morris, I mean, in the Albuquerque area, he at least had some name recognition. So, you know, let, I, let, I think let me there's jump a in. lot to look at. Let me dan- jump in, Daniel. You mentioned Mark Morris. I do want to pick up on that with, uh, with Merritt, for sure. I'm glad you brought that in. Uh, you know, the candidate has to be discussed, uh, Merritt, of course. He's taken some flack from more conservative Republicans out there for being not conservative enough or not. I'm not quite sure what the argument mm-hmm. here is, but this is a longtime Republican stalwart. He had name recognition. He's been around. I mean, what, what happened here in your view, Merritt? I, I think the, the biggest problem is, uh, and if you look at House, you know, U.S. House Republicans, um, they have gotten too close to Lauren Boebert and too far from Liz Cheney, mm. and they're running on one script. Um, and the Yvette Harrell script will not play in Albuquerque. And unfortunately, um, that script has been a failure in Albuquerque the last three election cycles, which is why we don't have any Republican legislators in Albuquerque. Mark Morris knows this district. Mm -hmm. And if you remember his first ads that came out with the UNM football team and they were funny, it was his personality and it talked about his record, that will play in Albuquerque. What's clear is the New Mexico GOP has no idea what's going on north of Socorro. And as soon as the professionals took over and you saw the more professional ads and it was angry, it was bitterness, it was divisive and Albuquerque stayed home or uh, they voted for uh, Stansberry, who to me, perfectly nice, forgettable candidate. I don't remember any of her ads. Uh, NRCC didn't put any money uh, in this, obviously. Mm -hmm. And the script um, that so many uh, House Republicans use 
doesn't work in Albuquerque. Well, so let me, let me ask you this, Merritt, and Dan brushed up against this as well. Where was the NRCC? It was the only race going on. I mean, I, I got Politico up on my screen here. Big screaming headlines. Dems breathe sigh of relief after New Mexico blowout. I mean, this was a highly watched election. And it seems like the folks at the national level couldn't have cared less for the Republican side of it. Am I, am I wrong here? To look at the fundraising, no. Um, uh, more than two to one, or yeah, more than two to one, 1.3 million to what, 595? Right. 500, yeah. Um, the national money poured in on the D side, not on the R side. NRCC, um, I guess mm-hmm. they're focused on their incumbents. They're, uh, they're supposedly obsessed with retaking the House, but not in New Mexico. Right, exactly. And we're a fairly cheap market uh, on top of it. <laughs> hey, Eric, I talked with yeah. Joe Monahan on, uh, yesterday on Wednesday on a Facebook Live about how much room uh, Ms. Stansbury will have to maneuver when it comes to policy. What I mean is progressives love the bona fides this time around and how she got in office. But it's going to be trickier when she gets a term or two of experience any certain demands that can't be avoided for progressives here or, or have is she beholden now to progressives? How does she move going into the general at this point? I mean, I think she has a pretty solid record of, uh, you know, she has a good solid progressive record on, you know, she's a climate change expert. It's what she's dedicated a career to mm-hmm. um, on most issues, paid sick leave, um, minimum wage, you know, the kind of the bread and butter progressive issue. She's been great, but she also, I think, made some overtures during the campaign to, you know, working across the aisle and um, certainly was focusing on things like infrastructure that were, you know, much more sort of middle of the road issues, I think, right, that aren't, you know, can't strictly say they're progressive issues. But I just want to pick up on something of merit. So like this is um, it was shocking to me that, uh, you know, when there's no other competing races, one thing when, the you know, the, the, the campaign committees for either party have a lot of races and they have to really pick and choose where they put resources. There was this was the only game in town. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they didn't at least nobody thought nobody who follows politics in, in this area thought that there was a chance that Mark Morris is agreeing. Certainly I didn't. Think. The question was, how big was the win going to be? And I was shocked. The biggest win I was looking at the fast. The past cycle is a bigger win than Biden had. It was a way bigger win than Deb Holland had. It was, it was very popular. Right. So um, I think it, I, I have a sort of a different take. I think it was the messaging. And maybe this is what Merritt was alluding to is that the, I think it was a repudiation of this whole, uh, you know, one trick uh, pony, you know, like this all crime, all anti-immigrant all the time message that mm-hmm. Mark Morse bought into. Um, I think it turned off in a district like this, it just turns off a lot of voters. But I think it's a I think it is a sick signal to upcoming races, the mayor's race and the mm. next uh, the next statewide race that, you know, going all in on this, mm-hmm. you know, uh, fear, all fear, uh, you know, a lot of uh, race baiting around immigration issues, around sanctuary cities, a lot of anti, you know, anti sort of activists, you know, uh, um, you know, just a lot of the calling, Kelly Melanie right. and Rod Radical is just I think uh, uh, I mean, it's, you know, just, you know, it, again, it's a good talking point from the GOP playbook nationally, but it does. It just didn't jive with reality. And I think mm-hmm. I think the Republican Party has a real problem in the upcoming races because, you know, this, you know, when everything, you know, if crime and immigration is your only uh, tool, or, you know, and, and hammers your only tool and everything looks like a, a nail. And I think that's what that's what Moore's did. That's what we heard from uh, from a lot of the, the legislators that were running in these swing districts who lost. Right. They ran on the same message. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I think that I hope there's a lesson there for them. I don't know if they're going to learn it. We'll see. Dan, I got a minute left. I want you to pick up on, on Senator uh, just a second ago that we've got Morris and Moronchetti both now not punching through using the same playbook. Well, you know, what's up with that? Is there is there anything else Republicans say or do or propose to win votes in this yeah district. i mean it, a minute a minute's not a, a enough time i mean i you know eric eric likes to throw out the great platitudes and i love i love being on the show with eric about the playbooks and all of that stuff look nothing works if you don't build the foundation for it if you don't lay the foundation look you know telling someone that they're you know they're for sanctuary cities and you're against it you need to make sure you're laying the play you're laying the foundation to get people to buy into that kind of stuff mm-hmm. and you know the i think the the reason that the the national republican congressional committee is not involved in this race is because the state party is not involved in this race i mean mm-hmm. it's a it's a you know it's a it's a top-down approach right if you're looking at as uh, in washington to be involved in a race and their own state party is not putting resources in the race why are you putting resources in the race so you know i think this is i think all of these things i'm not sure that it's a 
repudiation of conservatism and Republicans like Eric is 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 singing from the mountaintops, which he should be because he's winning right now. But I think what it is, is it's a repudiation of the way the Republican Party is being run right now. And the fact that, you know, the Republican Party is all geared towards electing Steve Pierce for his next run. And I think that you're seeing all these bodies laying on the side of the road from this because, he's they're not committed to doing what needs to be done to build a party and that's where i think we're we're falling down the mm. democrats seem to be building a party and the republicans seem to be building a one a one-man show we're out of time on this one by the way if you're still jonesing for politics we have all my post-election chat with joe monahan on our new mexico and focus facebook page